Let's talk about the basic tools and equipment we need to put a loaded cartridge together. The first and foremost item to buy is a good reloading manual. It not only covers the basic steps in the reloading process, but also gives you the powder charge information you need for most of the commonly reloaded cartridges. The data is outlined for each cartridge with powder loads for most of the commonly available powders and for most powder bullet types and weights. The load data contained gives velocities that the publisher obtained and their firearms used during testing. It also provides additional dimensional data such as case trim length and cartridge overhaul length. Some of these books also contain ballistic tables, cartridge histories, and detailed coverage about the firing sequence. Most of these books are beyond just being a recipe book, but are also interesting reading. I highly recommend the Hornady, Nosler, and Sierra reloading manuals. The books are great, but if you prefer a software version, many are available in that format. Now let's talk about the foundation of your reloading bench, the reloading press. You will commonly hear presses referred to as 7 8 14 press. This just refers to the diameter and thread pitch of the hole that the reloading dies thread into. Presses can be divided into two basic groups, single stage presses and progressive presses. The one I have here in front of me is a Reading single stage press called the Big Boss 2, and it performs one basic operation with each pull of the handle. A progressive press performs multiple reloading operations with each pull of the handle. Progressive presses are favorites of high volume reloaders, especially those that shoot thousands of handgun rounds per year. When you buy a reloading press, Make sure it is sized properly for the cartridges you're reloading. Make sure the throat opening is large enough and that the press has adequate leverage, especially if you're going to size large hunting cartridges. The next item on our list is a set of reloading dies. For bottleneck cartridges, a set will consist of a full length sizing die and a bullet seater. You can always add a neck sizing die if you want to just size the neck of the cartridge. The full length die is used to size most of the body of the case push the shoulder back, which adjusts the head space, decap the spent primer, and size the neck to the right inside dimension to properly grip the bullet. Almost all full length sizing dies consist of a die body and a decapping assembly with an expander ball. The bullet seater is used to seat the bullet into the case to the desired case length. Some bullet seeders also have a crimp ring inside the die that you can use to crimp the case neck to the bullet if you desire. A basic bullet seeder consists of the body and an adjustable seeder plug. Most dies are cartridge specific, but some bullet seeders will cover a small range of similar cartridges. Pistol die sets for single stage presses usually consist of a sizing die, expander die, and a bullet seeder with a built in crimp ring. A pistol die set that will be used in a progressive press will usually consist of a sizing die, a bullet seater with no crimp feature, and a separate crimp die. An expander die is usually not included in progressive die sets as the expansion or belling of the case mouth is commonly done at the powder metering station. Many of the sizing dies in pistol cartridges feature a carbide sizing ring on the die that lets the reloader skip lubricating the cases. To use the dies in your single stage press, you will need a shell holder that is the proper size for the cartridge you're loading. Most shell holders fit several different cartridges. They snap in and out of the press and are interchangeable with most brands of presses. Progressive presses don't use shell holders, but usually use a shell plate for different cartridges. A priming tool is not absolutely necessary if your reloading press has a priming arm, but it is a tool we recommend you have as the priming is much easier and accurate when performed in a separate operation. There are single stage tools like the Sinclair priming tool we have here or automatically fed priming tools like the Lee Auto Prime. As we move to powder dispensing, it is important to know that powder is dispensed or thrown by volume, The reloading manuals provide charges by weight of powder in grains. So to dispense powder, you need a powder measure and a powder scale. The powder measure throws a charge by volume. You adjust and set up the volume that the powder measure throws by using a scale to check the weight of the volume. When buying a powder measure, check to make sure it has the capacity that you need for the cartridges you will be loading. You can choose either an electronic or a balance beam scale. Make sure you set them on a level surface and turn off any air vents near them as they are very sensitive. You should check the calibration of your scale with check weights each time you use it. You will need a case trimmer unless you are only planning on loading your cases one time. As your cases are fired each time, your brass will lengthen. 
Your reloading manual will have the published trim length and the maximum allowable length. You must not exceed the published maximum allowable case length since it's very important to safety. If any of your cases become longer than the maximum allowable length, you can actually crimp the case neck around the bullet when you feed it into the chamber. This situation will cause dangerously high pressures. The trimmer is used to trim all of your cases back to the correct length and only needs to be done occasionally. This trimmer by Ellie Wilson and Sinclair is one of the most accurate trimmers on the market and uses a tapered shell holder for holding the case. This is my choice for rifle cartridge trimming, especially bottleneck cartridges. The other trimmer I have here is the Hornady trimmer, which holds the case with a traditional shell holder. This is my choice of case trimmers if I have to trim pistol cases, but there are several other excellent case trimmers on the market. Some miscellaneous tools you will need are case lubes for lubing your cases before sizing, a dial or digital caliper, a hex key set, a powder funnel, a case mount deburring tool for chamfering and deburring the case mouse after trimming, a neck brush for cleaning the inside of the case neck, a primer pocket cleaner or uniformer, and a loading block for holding your cases. Some additional tools that make reloading a lot more enjoyable and easier are a tumbler for cleaning your cases, a separator for separating your tumbling, media, and brass, and a case gauge to aid you in setting up your full-length sizing die.